my name is Benno Schwigowski. I'm one of the um, uh, principal investigators on the NRNB uh, program. Uh, and I'd like to show you uh, today uh, a uh, pl platform, really, not an app. It's technically an app, but it's, it's, it's in reality uh, something that functions as a platform inside of Scape. And uh, the, its purpose is to make it easier for people to implement and provide network inference algorithms to the biological community. This is uh, work with Uriel Guitart, who is a, a uh, engineer, software engineer in the group, who is going to give you a demo in a minute. Uh, and we are in uh, Paris, and uh, there's our website. Frank Rueckheimer is a postdoc who has helped us conceive this. Uh, um, so we view the role of net networks, really, as something that can take us from, from here to here. It makes the problem of going from the genotype and the perturbations that we have to the phenotype uh, uh, a little bit easier and, and to reason about what uh, causes uh, heart disease uh, based on genetic perturbations and, and all the measurements that we can make on these molecules a lot easier. And uh, our observation was that, of course, we have technologies that allow us to measure all these things, but they're really focused on the elements uh, like the proteins, the RNA, the metabolites, and, of course, the genome. But the connections, uh, that's really going uh, kind of an order, order of magnitude uh, slower. We have, for instance, lots of RNA measurements, but few large-scale measurements of, of these interactions. So one area, of course, that addresses that is called network inference. Uh, it's something that really uh, taking off a little bit in the past few years. Uh, among other things, there are a few high-profile articles that derive these networks from measurements of uh, RNA uh, under external perturbations or uh, RNAi perturbations. Um, principle appro one principal approach uh, that's being taken, in, for instance, in this paper is, uh, has to do with Bayesian networks. One or the other, if you may know what, what exactly that is. But then there's also the uh, DREAM initiative that uh, tries to provide a platform to evaluate all of these things. And I'm showing you here a long list that they published in a recent paper with all these different approaches that are there. Now, when you look uh, what is how, how much of that you can do in Cytoscape, uh, there's not so much around. There are a few uh, softwares outside of Cytoscape, like this one that uh, is one of the classical methods, I would say, in, in biology to do these things. It doesn't have many citations. There are other command line tools. They're all kind of hard to access, and I think that's one of the main reasons why they're little used. Now, in all fairness, I have to say there is a, a recent entry, even already available in the App Store, called Cytoscopter by uh, Julio size uh, Rodriguez lab, but uh, our platform is designed to make implementation for all the other algorithms a lot easier. And the basic idea is just that we segment these uh, different components of such a network in inference tool that, in principle, you could do outside of Cytoscape, that we segment them into different tasks, like, the, of course, the core algorithm that generates, does the computation, which edges should we infer from a given set of measurements on these different molecules. But then there's also similarity metrics that are being used by many algorithms, and many times they're the same metrics to measure similarity or distance between these measurements. There are things like discretization or data imputation that need to be done. There's elements of the graphical user interface that really don't ma interest many things who, let's say, care and do their research only ab uh, in, uh, about the core algorithm, maybe not even in the area of biology. So we thought that if we provide an infrastructure that uh, and, and fill it with a little bit of life and let people focus, let's say these people who develop these algorithms, sometimes in other fields, focus on the core algorithm and provide these things around them, that maybe we can um, you know, make the panorama of approaches that are available as tools for biologists a little bit uh, richer. Uh, and, of course, as a user, you can then benefit from your combination. You can use algorithm R A with similarity metric B and a discretization appro approach uh, uh, C. So uh, with, with that, I'm handing over to Orio, who will show you uh, where we are with this. We started earlier in this year, and this will show you what it looks in Cytoscape 3. Okay. Um, so, yes, I'll start with a demo of what uh, any user that downloads the app from the App Store can can see, and then 
And then I'll talk a little bit of what's internally in, in Signy uh, so that uh, future app developers could could use. Um, so, well, first of all, well, uh, to, to do this demo, we'll use the um, GAL filter. That's very common. Uh, we use the, the, so we use the data in GAL filter. And so to, to start, well, first of all, maybe we want to make sure that the data we have uh, doesn't contain any missing values. So to do that, uh, we go to Signy. Signy, by the way, it's finding tools. Uh, well, it's here in Signy tools. In, and the, so to estimate uh, the data, we go to the data imputation tool. And then, um, we select one of the algorithms that are already available. We'll choose the BPCA, the state of the art in this mix, and then the, the list of the tables that we could uh, estimate the data. We choose the node, it's the one we'll use for the network induction. And once the two inputs are selected, then we have uh, the parameters for this algorithm and this data. In this case, it's just a parameter to decide uh, which, uh, how the missing values are. Um, uh, a way so we can for decide an interval or just a number, but uh, also any gap in the cell in the table also will be considered an estimated and uh, missing value. So we click execute imputation, and just uh, it tells us the number of missing entries found and the number of estimated missing entries. So if everything goes well, the number should be the same. So now we are sure that uh, the data doesn't contain missing values. So now let, let's suppose that um, we want to um, use the the log um, the log expression ratio data to induce a new network. So, but uh, the, for example, we want uh, to use one of the Bayesian algorithms that we provide. And so, first of all, well, we need to discretize uh, our data. So we go to tools, sign new tools, and. Uh, and we use the data discretization tool. We select uh, again the one of the algorithms. In this case, uh, so far we only have one. And the table data, again the nodes. And again, we, we can see the, the parameters for the, for this algorithm. Uh, well, the, number, the number of bins, we'll leave it to five. If we're going to use, in this case, so equal frequency. And also, uh, in this case, we want to use the, the, the same thresholds for all the, the columns that we are going to select. Uh, and here we are going to look for the columns that contains the data we want to discretize. Uh, let's, so we select the, the columns to discretize, these ones. So now we only have to click execute discretization. Well, it seems that nothing happens, but uh, because it goes really fast. But if you go to the table, okay, we have uh, three new columns with uh, discretized uh, values. Uh, these columns always starts with nominal a dot, and then the name of the original column. So now that we have the the data discretized, we can go to the the tools again and use the network induction tool. And uh, we have, in so far, uh, we have three algorithms. Um, well, we'll show later where we, we can find the documentation for each of the uh, explaining the, all the parameters for each of these algorithms. In this case, our for the demo, we'll choose the K2 Bayesian. And the data, it's just uh, the node. So, Again, we have here all the, the parameters for this uh, algorithm. For example, uh, we need to use a similarity metric, and for this algorithm, there are all these possibilities of metrics, and well, we'll keep the Bayesian one. Uh, we can well, maximum number of parents, if we want to use, for example, random ordering. And then here's the list of uh, data attributes that um, contains uh, the data, it's the strings, and we, we, we select the the three columns that we just discretized. And, well, so we can start the induction. It's pretty fast. And so the result for uh, this kind of algorithm, it's a direct acyclic graph. So we, we can see that, um, 
uh, well, this is a, it's a directed uh, graph, and just to make this uh, look, look nicer, because it's, this is a grid layout, well, let's just use, for example, organic, and we can see that, well, uh, we're getting some kind of uh, structure where some genes have more important, probably, than the other one, so, well, this, and then just we should analyze th this data. So these are the, um, the possibilities that we are providing, but of course, uh, the idea is to make this uh, list of uh, algorithms uh, long, uh, bigger, and this, uh, so that's the reason we are providing also an, a framework to help, uh, well, I'm gonna keep going, to help um, developer, well, yeah, developers to, to implement their algorithms in, in Cytoscape. Um, the presentation we have. Okay, so, so just um, briefly, I'm going to talk a, a little bit uh, about what's internally in the structure of signing. That's uh, basically something that especially it will be useful for app developers that wants to, to integrate the algorithms through Signy. So the, the goal of, um, of Signy was to, to create an extensible framework, and this, the main element in this framework is the Signy API, where there are uh, several elements. Uh, basically, the first, uh, most important is the Signy manager interfaces, so any element in Cytoscape that wants to use uh, uh, an element in, in Signy needs to, to go through this interface and use the, the functions to do that. Um, another uh, important tool that we provide is the, what we call Signy table. Um, basically, Cytoscape, uh, the Cytoscape tables are not, uh, well, basically the, the algorithms in, in Signy, uh, they'll need to use uh, data in a, in a very intensive way and using Cytoscape tables is not the, a very efficient way, so we are providing a, a, a kind of intermediate table where there are also several functions to to get the data, and it's, that makes a more um, useful, a more efficient to, to work with this data. And finally, uh, we also are providing uh, several utility functions that that we think that are going to be useful for uh, developers that don't want to spend much time to to know really all the intrinsics in the, in the cytoscape, so uh, functions to, to display a, a new network, to, to clone a row, to copy a column, any kind of things that, well, sometimes maybe you should uh, spend some time to try to understand what's going on, so in these functions you just call it and we do the work for, for them. And also, as you have seen, we are providing a generic user interface that also the idea is that uh, users uh, don't want to spend time on on to trying to think how the windows will look and everything so this is al already we are taking care of that and finally uh, at the end so the, we have the different boxes where the what we call signing apps uh, should be there uh, any new algorithm will be stored in these categories and then will be able to be retrieved in uh, through the signing api so uh, so far, uh, that's what uh, is available in the first uh, beta release of uh, signing. Uh, the, the data implementation, the discretization, several metrics. But all these groups can be extended through the SINI framework. And to, to help uh, uh, any future users or also app developers who are providing several documentation, um, in this, you can find it in this URL. And so, first of all, there is user documentation explaining all the algorithms, uh, how to use them, all the parameters, what they mean. But also for uh, future app developers the willing to to use the Signy framework to implement their techniques. So uh, we are also providing so architecture description, tutorials, and, also in, and even a sample code, a kind of uh, hello world code. So they only have to just insert the, the algorithm, and uh, so it, sh it should work. So I think, no, we don't have anything else, so that's it. Thank you.
Yes. So the, our um, our app it's actually well, for the people stay going to the tutorial for developers it contains two two bundles, right. and one of the bundle is the API, mm -hmm. and the other one is the just the implementation. So the uh, so the idea is that this API it's what the other it's, it's the framework in a way. So what the the future other app developers that wants to use sign is is the, the bundle that they need to to have. Okay. Uh, 